So we are still in chapter 13, the age of science and exploration, and section 2 is all about the age of exploration. So far, the lessons that we covered, an expanding world where we learn about the technology uh, that were used by the Spaniards and the Portuguese as well as the French, the English and the Dutch in their exploration of new lands. And most recently, we covered about uh, how Christopher Columbus uh, intended to find India, and instead he landed at the Bahamas, calling the place the West Indies. So today, uh, we will learn about this Colombian exchange and what is the meaning of this. So go ahead, have your books ready, or go to our Loda USD website and go to Clever, and from there, send Gage Learning with your email and student password. And uh, from the left side, you will uh, navigate uh, from Unit 5 to Chapter 13 to Section 2 to Lesson 5, which is in pages 370 to 371. So this chapter's essential question is how did new ideas affect Europeans' views of the world? And uh, this lesson's objective is to describe the effect of a global exchange of foods, plants, animals, and disease that occurred in the period after Columbus arrived in the Americas. So lesson 2.5 describes the benefits and disasters brought about by this exchange. Now let's take a look at this introduction paragraph in this lesson. So for lunch, a girl in the United States eats an apple and a roast beef sandwich on a wheat bread. A boy in Ireland chows down on a turkey and tomato sandwich and some French fries. Now, so what? A girl in the United States and a boy in Ireland eats lunch. What's the big deal? The reason why this is important, in 1500s, neither person could have eaten this lunch. The two meals are a result of the Colombian exchange, a transfer of foods, plants, animals, and diseases between the old and new worlds. Well, early Europeans, especially the explorers, called uh, the Americas the New World, uh, North and South America. And uh, the reason for that is because they see Europe where they're from as the Old World. So because of navigation, uh, there is this improved connections within these places, um, the Americas, Europe, Africa and Asia. So the combined impact was enormous. Uh, places and people that were once isolated from one another became part of this, what we call global exchange network. The contact and trade between this far flung lands helped some people and harmed others. So obviously there are people who were exploited with this exchange and a lot of people got very wealthy and benefited from this. For example, European diseases killed more Native Americans than warfare. So the Native population of Central America fell from about 25 million to 2.5 million between 1519 to 1565. So that is a very short uh, period of time. So obviously it's not all dark and grim. So the Europeans introduced such familiar foods as wheat, barley, oats, grapes, apples, citrus fruits, and olives, and they also brought cattle, sheep, pigs, goats, chickens, and horses. The use of horses changed warfare and transportation in the Americas, while other livestock provided new sources of foods. Of course, I will not get into the details of that. Europeans also brought crops from Africa and Asia to the Americas. So these crops included bananas, coffee beans, and sugar cane. So sugar cane grew especially well in the Caribbean. Caribbean climate, and uh, unfortunately, uh, by the use of slave labor, um, Europeans uh, uh, exploited them, so European growers were able to harvest the sugar and sell it at a huge profit in Europe at the expense, of course, of uh, slavery. On top of this, Europeans also introduced deadly new diseases to the Americas. Remember, Europeans uh, recently survived the Black Death. So they are immune to these uh, deadly diseases. These are the surviving Europeans. Native people had no resistance against such disease and such as missiles, uh, malaria, and smallpox. Smallpox uh, proved to be especially deadly, killing millions of native 
uh, native people across the Americas because caused by this virus, the smallpox is highly contagious. It produces a high fever and small blisters on the skin and leave uh, pitted scars and the virus would finally be eradicated only uh, in the United States by the year 1900s. So in the Colombian exchange, uh, animals and plants also traveled from the Americas to Europe and Africa. So explorers returned to Europe with such exotic foods such as turkeys, peppers, corn, tomatoes, potatoes, tomatoes, potatoes, beans, and squashes. Uh, many of these foods eventually became regular part of European diets, part of their daily meal. Other imports were considered luxuries because they are very expensive. You know, the, the law of supply and demand, when it's uh, very rare, there are few supplies, most likely there's a higher demand for it and therefore it will be expensive, it can be expensive, including tobacco, vanilla, and cacao beans. So vanilla was used for uh, flavoring and the cacao beans uh, were used to make chocolate drinks and uh, of course when they put sugar and milk uh, it is a sweetened dessert uh, that many kids and adults well everyone loves well of course if you had food allergies well anyway enough of that uh, side comments so the new world uh, also contributed uh, an important medicine called quinine uh, to the old world so Europeans learn about the quinine, uh, which comes from the bark of a tree in South America in the 1600s. Uh, they discovered this for about 300 years. It served as the only effective remedy for malaria. Now, what's the bottom line of this? Of course, there are good and bad sides uh, to this. So, well, uh, the Colombian exchange affected the lives of people throughout the world. Others benefited from it, while others, of course, were obviously exploited and even killed. Uh, well, of course, there are so many theories what could have happened if the Europeans and the Native Americans uh, or the native inhabitants of this land never encountered uh, the explorers. So, of course, there are so many possibilities uh, to that. Uh, but the thing is, we can only imagine. But the thing is, um, looking back from what had what happened in the past, obviously, this exchange had a lot of you know, positive, uh, good sides. And at the same time, of course, we cannot deny the fact that there are also um, almost equally negative effect or effects of this. Well, look at this, for example, about 30% uh, of the foods eaten today um, originated in the Americas. A greater variety of foods help improve the nutrition of people around the world. So obviously that's the good side. However, the effect of the Colombian exchange on native populations uh, in the Americas was disastrous. It is not just, you know, disastrous because of death. There's also um, enslavement and abuse and exploitation. So this is the thing that happened in the past. There are like good uh, sides that we can uh, continue uh, to do. Uh, we need to continue and uh, keep on doing there are also bad things that we need to stop doing, I think, or learn from the past, as they say. So I think that's the purpose of this. Um, we learn from our uh, mistakes and uh, we move on with um, a better approach to the things that we could have done in the past. But the, things is, uh, the thing is we cannot uh, change the past. We can only do something about our present and from here on moving forward uh, a better and an improved um, way or ways of uh, approaching life in general. All right, now to the much awaited review and assess questions. I know you are too excited to answer these questions. Number one, reading check. How did the Colombian exchange benefit Europeans, the old world? Number two, analyze cause and effect. Why was the Colombian exchange disastrous for 
Native Americans. And number three, interpret maps. What foods do you eat that came to the Americas in the Colombian exchange? Oh, by the way, you can also add how did the Colombian exchange uh, disastrous or negatively affected the Europeans? And number two, you can also add what are the benefits of the Colombian exchange to the Native Americans. And for number three, what foods do you eat that came to the Americas in the Colombian exchange? The last one should be easy and supposedly ideally fun for you because you are just thinking about one of the things that we all love to do to eat. Now go to the Google Classroom and open the Review and Assess assignment and answer those questions in the Review and Assess slide, Google slide, and it's the last lesson 2.5, the Colombian Exchange, pages 370 to 371. Obviously, fill up uh, you know the, the, the name, date, class period, and uh, don't forget to write the title of this lesson as well as uh, the correct answers, obviously. And if you want to get the full credit, always write in complete sentences and be sure that you are double checking your answer and you are giving your 100% so that there is no reason for Mr. Ramos to give you any less than 100%.